Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Welcome back to my DIY gift series. My next DIY gift idea is something you might have made for someone before, but I'm showing you the new and improved 2019 version. I'm talking scarves and specifically the pull through scarf. So in terms of DIY scarves, we've been going through a bit of a transition over the years. First, there was the infinity scarf. How many of those did you make a couple of years ago? Then we had the blanket scarf craze. I could never really get into that one. It was just like too much fabric around my neck. Well, the it scarf for 2019 is the pull through scarf. I've mostly seen it in faux fur, which is super luxe, but there's also the ever popular chunky sweater knit version. And I've even seen it in shirling, super cozy. But today I'm going to show you how to make one in flannel with the fringe edges and everything. So let's get to the tutorial. All right, so first things first, um, you can see I'm using a scrap of fabric. So I uh, had to piece two large pieces together. If that's what you're doing, uh, good for you. Way to recycle that fabric. Um, so all I did was zigzag stitch and then pressed it to one side and then top stitch. That's how I pieced my pieces together. And now I have a fabric that is uh, kind of a very wide rectangle and I want it to be a little bit more narrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it in half uh, against the grain, so like uh, long ways, I guess. The rectangle is going to be long and skinny rather than like wide. I think that that will look better for the scarf. But, you know, put your piece of fabric around you and do whatever you like best or whatever you think the person that you're making this for will like best. Um, I just think a longer, skinnier one is better for this style, for the pull-through style. So that's why I'm going to do it on this one. So I've just folded it uh, in half, uh, the short, side in half yes um and so halfway is like i don't know kind of halfway in the middle of this like stripe or plaid or whatever you want to call it this one here so i am going to follow that line and cut down the center of my fabric and i'm kind of just eyeballing it because we're going to fringe all of this anyways so it doesn't have to be perfect but if you're someone that likes for it to be perfect, by all means, make it perfect. Do whatever you like and whatever you will be proud to give away on Christmas morning. And this might even be one of those that you can rip. Like I said, we are going to be fringing it anyways. Should I just rip it? Oh, I don't know what that's going to do to the edge. Let's do it. Let's go for it. I'm committed. I'll have to cut through my seam that I made, but that's okay. All right, that was easy. Now I have two pieces. Sometimes it can like distort the edge, but again, because I, we're fringing it, I think that it's fine. Okay, so now I have a, a long skinny rectangle and you want to find one part of like you wanna find the halfway mark, I guess the quarter way mark. So halfway is where my seam is, and now I'm gonna find the quarter way mark. And this is where we are going to put in our little hole so that we can do the pull through. And again, this is personal preference. Some people have it, you know, just a few inches from the edge. Some people have it higher. It just depends on how much you want it up on your neck. So once you determine that, you are gonna to need to uh, either get a, another scrap of fabric or just cut off part of the end of your fabric here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to ditch the selvage and cut just along this line here. You're not going to miss it much. This is already a long scarf. I can do the same thing to the other end like so. And again, just find a line, 
and follow along there. Perfect. Okay, so go back to your quarter mark. And what we're gonna do is basically the beginnings of like a welt. Um, so we're gonna sew this right sides together. Let me cut this a little bit smaller, which, hmm, I'm trying to think. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna be on the wrong side, but I do want it to look nice on the wrong side still. So let me cut off the selvage completely. And then I'm just going to save the red and then the two on the either side. And that'll give me um, a little more than one, two, three, four, five, five and a half inches. So I could do a five inch pull through. That sounds good. I swear I've done this. <laughs> I'm not just completely winging it, but I think each plaid is kind of different and unique all on its own. So. I don't know, it's kind of a little bit of winging each time. But basically what you're gonna do is lay down the, the scrap of fabric. You're gonna go to your serger first and serge around all four sides, or you can use pinking shears, whichever you prefer. Then you're gonna lay this along the center of your fabric and you are going to sew a rectangle all around all four sides of the scrap of fabric. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can see I've got my little rectangle. I surged all around all four sides and I've got a little box in the middle. My box is about half an inch from the raw edges. You really don't need the inside of the box to be that big because, uh, you know, it's not like a button has to go through it. Um, we're just slipping through the fabric through it. So it doesn't have to be that wide. I mean, it can just be like, this is probably half an inch um, wide this way and probably five and a half inches long. But again, the length can vary too. So just use your creative freedom. This isn't like super serious, but now you're cutting through both layers, just like you do for a welt pocket cut uh, about a quarter inch away from the edge of your box and then snip into those corners. Same thing on the other side, you're cutting again through both layers and you wanna cut two but not through the stitching in the corner. All right, and then now you are flipping this to the wrong side of your scarf. And if you don't have a seam like me, then your right and wrong side probably look pretty similar. So you're gonna pull this all out of the hole that you cut and take it over to your ironing board and press all of these seams open and flat so that your rectangle is flat on the wrong side. A little hard to do without an ironing board, but something like this. <laughs> all right, so take it over to your iron and get all that pressed nice and neat, and then go back to your sewing machine and top stitch this whole thing down. And you are going to be able to see that top stitching from the right side, so be sure you have a thread that looks really pretty with your scarf fabric. All right, there we have it. We have our little keyhole opening completely sewn and you kind of get the idea. You're gonna take your end of your scarf and it gets pulled through the keyhole like so. And now you have a cute little pull through scarf. Okay, and to make the raw edges look a little bit more intentional and a little bit more cozy and fall-like, we are gonna fringe out our edges. So I like for the long edges of the fabric to have like a short half an inch fringe. And then I like for the short edges to have a really long, like, I don't know, how many inches is this? Probably up to this line here. So that is four inch fringe, but feel free to go even longer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm actually going to stitch a, a stitching line half an inch away from both of the long edges. And then, um, you don't have to do one on the short edge because the fringe is so long, 
you don't really run the risk of it coming undone anymore. But if you want to be extra careful, you can go ahead and do a stitching line there as well. So let me get those two lines in and I'll show you the easiest way to make fringe. Okay, there we have it. You can see my stitching line half an inch from both sides of the long edge. And if you're making this along with me, you can already tell that the threads are wanting to be pulled out anyways. And you can tell I'm just kind of using my fingernail to pull it out. You can also grab a seam ripper, which I know we all have. Here's mine. Um, you can use an awl, you can use a weeder if you have like a Cricut machine or something, but you can tell I'm just pulling these uh, threads one layer at a time and it's creating this really cool fringe effect all along the raw edge. So you're just going to keep pulling these out until um, you reach your stitching line. Try not to get ahead of yourself. Don't do two at once. <laughs> it's one of those things, kind of like making the pom-poms last week where you just wanna sit in front of the TV, watch your Hallmark movies, get a little trash can, like a bathroom trash can nearby, and just start pulling these out. Okay, now for the long edge, or for the short edge, we're gonna do the really long trim. I have a special technique for that, which I think makes faster work of it. But basically what I wanna do is cut this into, I don't know, like quarters maybe. And I wanna cut up to um, where I want the fringe to stop like this and then do it halfway between there and halfway between here. And this way, as you're getting really deep into the scarf, uh, you only have these little sections to pull out rather than the full uh, width of your scarf. And it's just, it goes by a little bit faster just to pull out um, little five or six inch sections at a time rather than the whole entire um, width of the scarf. Does that make sense? So I think this goes by a lot faster if you can cut it and break it up into little sections. And then over here, I shouldn't have stitched past this line. So I'm going to have to pull out all these stitches from here back, but that's okay. I didn't back stitch or anything, so they should come out pretty easily depending on how my sewing machine did. Yeah, there's no, there's no thread or anything or nest, I mean. Anyways, you get the idea. So here we go. Let's, let's start fringing the scarf. of the short side done and half of the uh, long side done. And you can see kind of what's happening with the fringe with the short side, so cute, and then the long side. So the long side, you can take the time to twist like two or three of them together at once. Mine are kind of doing their own little twisty thing, which I kind of don't hate. Um, so I might just leave that and see what happens. But if you want to take this a step further and personalize it, which makes it extra special for Christmas and sort of like, I definitely didn't just buy this at Nordstrom, um, you can put some embellishments on it. So uh, I think for me, I am going to put a monogram uh, using my Cricut iron on vinyl. Uh, you could also uh, find, like, I don't know, if you have some, like, brooches or something that's like an heirloom, something, even if you just got it at, like, the flea market or an estate sale or something, like a cluster of brooches on a scarf, I think is so beautiful. And kind of, if it's your own brooches, that's definitely very meaningful to be able to pass that along and whatnot. 
but it's a pretty straightforward project and now you can just have a lot of fun embellishing however you see fit and whatever you think the recipient of the gift will really like. So there you have it. My second DIY gift idea. Super easy, right? Also super affordable. One yard of fabric. Uh, search the remnant bins and make it for really cheap. If you want some more ideas, stay tuned to this channel every Saturday this month and be sure to check out last week's video featuring pom-poms. There's a ton of info about this tutorial in the description box, so be sure to check that out. And if you aren't already, please subscribe. It really means so much to me. Raise your hand in the comment section below to let me know if you're a new sub so I can give you a personal welcome. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.